All right, I think uh, Chairman Stevens is probably going to be joining us in a minute. We have a quorum. We just don't have the bill's sponsor, and we were going out to find him. But here comes Chairman Stevens now. Matter of fact, we may have to have him present the bill since, since uh, uh, is he on his way? Okay. Um, i tell you what I'm, I am going to do. I'm going to ask uh, Chairman Shaw if you would uh, open us with a quick word of prayer. That would be great. And you are what number? 26. 26. Thank you. All right, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, accept our thanks for all the many blessings in the world. Accept our thanks for getting us back up here to do the people's business safely today. We ask for your wisdom and your mercy and your grace. And... Uh, as we try to do the things in ways that are pleasing to you, we ask you your continued guidance each and every day. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you want to take over or? Chairman Taylor, you uh, glad you could join us. Um, we're going to go ahead and let you uh, take the podium and talk about the bill, please. Tommy Moore, Tom, you better hear. Day. <laughs> Actually, good standing. Go ahead, sir. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen of the committee, uh, Mr. Chairman, I bring before you uh, House Bill 879, which is basically a bill that encourages but does not mandate um, biliteracy, bilingual education in Georgia, and would affix a seal at the discretion of different school boards um, to a diploma if, if students so, show a proficiency in this. Um, being um, bilingual myself, trilingual, actually, I speak English, Tagalog, and, and Japanese. Um, it's helped me in my business career. A lot of folks outside of this country speak English, but that is not reciprocated a lot of times with um, with with students, you know, in, in the university or high school system going overseas, uh, do not speak other languages. Um, as the global economy, you know, uh, in, in Georgia, we have 69 foreign consulates based here. Um, a ton of international direct investment um, in, in, in companies like Kia, um, you know, like Siemens, uh, you know, Hitachi out in Newton County. Um, it just it, it is an incentive for, for people to um, take language courses, use this in their business career. Again, there's no mandate in this, but it would allow uh, folks to affix a seal to a diploma that says this student has demonstrated proficiency in language, languages um, outside of their native tongue. And I'll be okay. glad to answer any questions. Um, I have a quick question for you. I think probably with the workforce development aspect that we're looking for in the state of Georgia, that this is probably a fairly strong tool. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. You know, um, as as we go around, and, and like I said, on, on, as economic development, we've got um, a, a ton of companies. We're the best place to do business in the United States, but we do lag behind in this. Um, there are not as many language programs in high schools as you see in a lot of other places. Um, basically, um, you know, it, it has a standard. You know, the cost of proficiency test is, is commonly about thirty-five dollars. Um, but you know, if the school system could pay for that, or there are many private, you know, grants to assist with funding, um, they must to to obtain the seal. They must um, complete all ang English language arts requirement with an overall GPA of three point zero, and show proficiency in a foreign language. Great. Okay. Uh, anybody from the committee have any questions? Ms. Holmes. I'm just interested, uh, Representative Taylor, in 
And did, did an education group come to you and request this? Is this something that you thought of yourself? Th this is, this is um, basically not, not as much of an education group as an economic development group. Um, and, you know, uh, this is why it is in front of this committee instead of okay. education because it, it goes to education, but yes. the end thing is workforce development and economic development here. Yes. Um, basically preparing um, our workforce uh, to participate in the global economy, but uh, you know, yes, it, it ties into education, but the ultimate goal is economic development and, and workforce development. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Um, Representative Murray. Thank you, thank you, uh, Representative, for bringing this uh, forward. As, as bilingual myself, uh, uh, I think it's important we're not, uh, I think, uh, our 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 economic development and our our uh, employ force uh, it's not competing against Alabama it's not competing against North Carolina we're competing globally uh, and in fact I, I if I might read something because I was just doing some research uh, and I, I came up to with this uh, it's world language competency credits empower high schoolers to honor cultural heritage. There's more than 40 million people in the United States that speak a language other than English in their home. And what we're trying to do is making those people that speak English at home to learn another language. Of course, I've always been uh, integrated into you know Latinos or the Asians, Korean, Chinese, Japanese to, to learn English. I think that's a, that's a the language, uh, the business language of of, of word. Uh, uh, but again, I think bringing this this forward, I think it, it will it will bring uh, uh, something that uh, uh, will have more students and more workforce prepare uh, to again uh, deal with this globally uh, uh, business environment that we are in. Uh, uh, this, the, the data is courtesy of the, uh, by the Pew Research Center should indicate a growing comfort and acceptance among young believing Americans and their peer. Uh, and it goes on and, and what it tells is that, you know, I think, and, and, and it's sad, uh, Representative, that uh, right now we're, we're dealing again for the sixth time uh, since 2006 with English only legislation. Uh, uh, and, and, and again, I've always wanted uh, to make sure that you know it, it, we're we're more diverse. We cannot see Georgia 40, 50 years ago. This is 2016, and I think you know I represent one of the most diverse districts in the in the in the state. So again, I think that uh, we need to have people prepare. Uh, uh, with other languages, uh, uh, your, your your primary language is English. You know, encourage people to learn. Could be Spanish. Could be Mandarin, which is the the the, the number one language spoken uh, in the world. So so again, I I, I uh, commend uh, representative for bringing this bill forward, uh, and I hope that uh, in fact when whenever the the committee is is ready, I would like to entertain a motion uh, on, on the bill. And, and I'd, I'd just like to say this is, this is not precluding English. You have to, to get the certificate, mm -hmm. to get this seal, mm -hmm. you have to have sh shown a 3.0 or above average in English. Um, this is merely encouraging folks to go out there, um, you know, from, a, from a, a, a lifetime career perspective and things like that to, to um, one, be very proficient in English uh, because it is the language of commerce here and in a lot of the world. Mm -hmm. But again, encourage um, folks to go out there and, and learn another language. Um, you know, uh, again, at the end of the day, we have 69 foreign consulates here. I know Chairman Stevens has traveled with me over, you know, over you know, places like Turkey, and I don't speak Turkish, but almost everybody we run into speaks English, um, and the reciprocity is sort of the, the coin of the realm now. So glad to entertain any more questions. Um, Representative Blackman, do you have something? Real briefly, just going to ask you to confirm that this doesn't put any additional testing on the table at all, no required testing. Uh, basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a, one, you have to meet the criteria, one, with the grade point average in, in English, um, but two, you would, and it's very much at the discretion of the school, school district, there's no requirement for this, but it simply enhances somebody's application going on to higher education um, that says, you know, not only do I have a, a competency in, in English at a 3.0 or above level, um, but I also speak Spanish or Japanese or like Mandarin, you know, or Russian, wh whatever that may be, to 
again, workforce development, we are in a global environment right now, and it's, 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 um, it's, it's, a, it's another tool in the box. Okay, uh, number 10, sorry, 10. Then Thomas, um, well, I, you know, I do see it from a economic development perspective as well. Um, I'm just uh, trying to, even if it's voluntary uh, and not mandated, it, it, it creates, it, does it not, is it, does it not create a, a uh, not meaningful, but two tier system, because immediately a person with a person with this uh, diploma does go to the head of the class, and so it, and is and is it, and if you have to go through a four year course in high school to obtain it, uh, I'm not sure enough about this education or perspective to know whether or not there will be schools that won't have it offered and. And, and subsequently, it'll, it'll create an unequal tier in terms of education. That, this um, is, if, if I might, Representative Thomas, I think we have someone here from the Georgia Department of Education who may be able to address that. And so uh, if you would just kind of withhold that question okay. until they talk, that All would right. be great. And, and, and Chairman Taylor, I'm just going to ask them to go ahead and come on. I'm just going to hang on. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Mr. McGibney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Gary McGibney with the Department of Education. Uh, first of all, let me make it abundantly clear that we fully support the bill. Uh, the department has already been looking into the bioliteracy seal, and we've been working with businesses. The problem we ran into uh, was how you determine competency to the point that a business, when they see the bioliteracy seal, can hire a person based just on the seal because they know absolutely that the person is competent and proficient in that second language. Um, and that did raise some of the question that you raised about the four years. Not, not all high schools offer four years of foreign language. So to have that as one of the qualifiers could create a problem. And if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, we would like to make, suggest respectfully some amendments to the bill. One would be to uh, eliminate the four year foreign language because that does not ensure that a person is proficient in that language. Uh, we have some evidence of that where students taking proficiency exams after four years of courses do not necessarily do well on those proficiency exams. The other is on line 30, and I'm looking at LC 41020. I'll just categorically go through these if I may, Mr. Chairman. On lines 30 and 31, we recommend, and again, this is based on our research and our experience with, uh, with students, is that the advanced placement exam score, here it says three, we recommend that be four. And the IB, instead of four, recommend that that be five. If those scores are attained on AP and IB, you can rest assured that that person is competent and proficient in that second language. Also going to the uh, representative's point earlier about the four-year course of study on lines 36, we might want to consider just striking that. And also on line 39, let me tell you about the SAT II foreign language examination. While it's rigorous, it does not include a speaking component. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to do very well on that and yet not be proficient in the speaking component. And the business people that we've met with, that's primarily what they really want, is someone who can communicate verbally in the, in the other language. So we would recommend in the amendment, and again, with all due respect uh, to the uh, bill and to the chair presenting the bill, that those changes be made in the bill. Okay. Um, Ms. Carr, do you want to speak? to some of that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so
So I'm Kellen Carr and representing Partnership for a New Economy, which represents the National Sill of Bioliteracy. And primarily they were um, wanted to bring this to Georgia from a workforce and economic development perspective. This is something that's already passed in 11 other states and then 15 states have adopted this bill. Um, primarily, Georgia has over 3,000 international companies in the state. They employ roughly over 174,000 employees, and they are looking for bilingual students. Um, as far as the proficiency, some of the things that DOE recommended, from our perspective, that certainly wouldn't give us any concern. Um, so, but you know, certainly we would suggest that this do pass because we do feel like it's a great workforce and economic deve development statement. Um, like I said, other states have already moved forward with this and, and feel like it, it's something that we do need here in Georgia. Mr. McGibney, would, would the Department of Education uh, have any concerns of, rather than bringing this committee back, um, if a do pass motion is made, we do pass the bill, but then uh, the chair, the uh, the author of the bill, and the Department of Economic Development has also said they'd be more than happy to sit there and work with you on the amendments. Do you have a problem with that? No, sir. Okay, great. Strike draw. You have anything? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, it looks like. Well, first I want to say, coming from a school board background, um, back you know when we were developing our mission statement, you know we talked about preparing kids to compete in a global marketplace. So I definitely think this is necessary. Um, and you know if we want kids to compete in a global marketplace, they definitely need to speak a couple languages because other countries they come out with you know three or four languages, and you know we and comments I would get is well we're struggling to teach them English, and why is that? Um, but um, so I, I like your change about not requiring them to take the four-year class because you do have a lot of people that are already, you know, native in in a foreign tongue and they don't need to take the class, but they can take an exam and opt out of the class, kind of like a CLEP exam. Um, but um, that being said, I wish we were teaching foreign languages in elementary school where the kids retain it. Because I say if, if they get it before they're nine, they retain the language. Um, so, but, so this is saying that they do have to take a test in order to receive the seal. So if they can test in lieu of the class, but if they're taking the classes, aren't they testing throughout and, or do they have an end of course test in the foreign languages? How are they currently testing in those foreign language programs is my question. I'll let DOE speak first, but I'll answer your question. Okay, thank you. Me, it does vary from school to school and class to class and language to language, so I can't really give you a uniform answer to that. Um, What's working? But, what what model do you see working? In well, the terms one that works is the one that includes formative assessments during the course of the of the semester, mm -hmm. so that a student doesn't get to the end of the semester and then you realize when there's a final exam that they have not mastered the material. So, is this test one that they take as part of the course, or is this an additional test they would need to take well, if you to earn at, this certification? I'm sorry. If you look at the bill. In uh, line 30, that paragraph there from line 30 to 35, that will get at what you really want this bioliteracy seal to represent, and that is the competency exams. And they range in price depending on the language, typically $25 to $50 each. So they would have to pay an additional fee to take this class to get the designation? Not the class, but the I mean the test, the sorry. Exam. Yes, and we found that uh, some schools uh, will support that and, and offer the cost either to be paid by PTA or a grant or by a company themselves. And also we foresee that, you know, we have the Georgia Foundation for Public Education, a nonprofit, and we will uh, su suggest and, and uh, encourage businesses to make a contribution to that foundation and they can earmark it for this particular purpose to pay for these exams. Well, but if they're already testing these kids throughout the course, can they not just in integrate that as part of their testing yes. practice without adding another test? These are more rigorous exams than the end of course test. Uh, these are more for the competency and proficiency of 
the language itself and not just the course. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to expound on that a little bit. You know, um, and it's inconsistent language instruction through different school systems. Um, you know, you've got some of your larger systems that offer many languages. Um, say, like in DeKalb County, you know, they offer uh, Spanish, uh, you know, uh, Mandarin. Um, we have schools that offer German. Now, some smaller systems just can't, you know, don't have that, you know, the the the, the capacity to do that. And the day there are alternative methods too. Um, you can go and get Rosetta Stone, you know, and uh, while you're doing your homework, put the headphones on, and practice like that. What what this is attaining is not a, a a specific number of hours in a classroom and everything like that. It's testing that end use competency to actually conduct business or commerce in in, in that language. Um, my wife can read and write French. She cannot speak it. Um, she does not have a, a good ear for that. Um, she can read a, a book in French. She can write in French, um, but get in a conversation and, and it just doesn't happen. Um, again, I like to see it start at, at younger ages because you retain more of it. I mean, you know, I, I learned my second, third languages later on in life, but um, end of the day, th there are various ways to get there. But at, uh, the the end the end product that we're looking for with this bill is to enhance our, our workforce, um, enhance our business position vis-a-vis -vis other states, um, and, and simply encourage this to happen. It doesn't mandate anything. Um, like I said, when I was in Tennessee a couple weeks ago, they said, you don't speak the king's English. I said, I speak English very well. They said, no, you don't talk like Elvis. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, it sounds like um, <clears throat> we've got everybody pretty much on the same page. Um, I am really glad to see a collaborative effort with economic development and education. Sounds like you guys are doing good, good things. Um, I think we've sort of reached a consensus here that uh, we can entertain a motion on the bill, and you guys will get together and work out some of the uh, some of the amended language that DOE is comfortable with. So, based on that, um, uh, Representative Marin, you have a. A motion that you'd like to make? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. I would like to motion that uh, House Bill 879 uh, as a substitute, because we're talking as a substitute of 879 with the uh, Department of Education and the uh, sponsor of the bill to clear some of the language. I, I don't uh, think you can use the word substitute. We'll not pass, yet. We will pass. The bill at its, at, at, as the it bill is. The bill as written, and then they will. Then they will okay, so it, motion to do pass House Bill 879. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The bill passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, one other quick thing. I have been asked that uh, to tell you guys that on the 18th, we're touring Eagle Rock Studios. If you have not RSVP'd, uh, Ms. Mogart is ready to kill you if you have not RSVP'd yet, and she will do so. Okay. We're good. You'll that? get back to her on that. Huh? And then also so set a tentative date uh, for Pinewood Studios uh, no, on February the 22nd. Yeah. About maybe. If the, I think that's everything. So uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. It's a long